Hey guys, Thomas here, and in today's video, I am just going to be giving a brief overview of what stigma is and what it looks like in the real world and how it affects my population of interest within the United States, which is the Latina community. So to start off with what stigma is, stigma is something that attaches to the identities and actions of certain community members or certain populations and then renders them incomplete members of society. There is a clear winner and loser to stigma. There is someone on the superior side and someone on the inferior side. There are clear power dynamics when it comes to stigma. And something that goes really underrepresented about stigma is its cyclical nature that allows it to persist over such lengths of time. When stigmatized populations start to confirm bigoted biases, you start to see society genuinely view them in this way and this allows room for systems and policies to be enacted which negatively affect the stigmatized population even further. So easily one of the most common stigmas towards the U.S. Latina community is that of immigrants and not only are all Latinas just seen as immigrants, the people that actually find themselves being immigrants have a really hard time in the U.S. because of how much justification has been made of them being undeserving of rights and a place to stay within the United States. And so probably the most common label thrown at them is that they are just seen as threats both economically and socially. Economically they're seen as people that come over to steal American jobs and then socially they're seen as people that come over as criminals and they're here to do no good within the United States. And one of the large consequences of them being seen as a threat is that they are open targets for deportation. Although they make up around 50% of all immigrants, they make up around 95% of all deportations. And even if these people happen to stay within the U.S., they have few rights and policies that help protect them as an informal class. They don't have social security. A lot of them can't get credit cards. A lot of people are discriminated and abused while at the workplace by their employers. And even just not having social security is a very, very big form of disenfranchisement. They cannot partake as full members of society because they don't have these things. And then another very common stigma towards the U.S. Latina community is that of Spanish-speaking people or people with a lack of English proficiency. And so within the U.S., speaking Spanish or not being able to speak English as well is looked down and frowned upon. It's shamed. A lot of people, I'm sure, that you've seen over the internet or in the real world talk about how this is America, we speak English. And so people that speak Spanish or can't speak English as well are kind of summed up as people that are either dumb or refusing to learn. They're infantilized. And this can lead to a sense of worthlessness. A lot of people can stop speaking Spanish altogether because there's a shame that comes with it as well as people that don't speak English may not you know want to speak English as much because there's stigma that comes with having an accent or just not being able to speak English as well and something that I really found interesting about the U.S. is that a lot of countries around the world will recognize English as a primary language they'll teach English to their students growing up as well as whatever the language is of the home country but within the U.S. even though around like 25 percent of the entire population speaks Spanish we don't recognize it as something as important and it shows up within the systems and policies and it creates a lot of language barriers for a lot of people who only speak Spanish or can't speak English as well. And then I'm going to sort of categorize all of these as one big stigma, and that is all the ridiculous caricatures that are made of the Latina community and people within the community. And so some of the most common caricatures that you guys might be able to recognize are that of young Latina boys and being Edgars or having Edgar cuts, and then of young girls, it might be being Hot Cheeto girls, of younger women, it might be being spicy, feisty, exotic, and then for women working, it might be not having a job at all, being a housewife, or working, you know, non-traditional jobs like being a housemaid, and then for men, it's you know, a lot of manual labor, farming, gardening, those are the common stigmas placed onto the Latina community. And something that's really interesting about this stigma is that it kind of creates a timeline for the Latina community. For the boys and girls, they're kind of seen as people that have no future, they're dumb, they're ghetto, they're ratchet, they might partake in criminal activity. They're just not seen as good people who are bound to do good things within their life. And then when they're older, this is kind of their timeline. They're going to be working within the informal class. They're going to be gardeners. They're going to be farmers. They're going to be people who don't have many rights. They're going to be housemates. They're going to be things like this where they don't really make things of themselves. And within the Latina community, this is sort of leading to self-fulfilling prophecies where this is what you expect of yourself because this is what others expect of you and your future. And when you confirm that bigoted bias, this is what allows stigma to continue on because there's a justification for why you are the way that you are as a group of people. And then I don't really know if this would count as stigma, but something that was really interesting to look at and something that I wanted to have answered was if there was a certain look and certain depiction of a Latina person. So I just went around work. It's a super unserious sample survey, but I asked 30 people, when you think about a Latina person within your head, what is the first color of skin that comes to mind? And overwhelmingly, they said brown. And so it's just really interesting to see if not only is there stigma against the entire Latina community, but there's also, you know, stigma towards who fits being a Latina person. And I bring this up and I did this sample survey because I found something really interesting by the Pew Research Center, which found that during the first 12 months of the pandemic, darker skinned Latina people actually reported facing more discrimination than lighter skinned Latina people. So again, I think it just makes you think, is there not only a stigma, but then a sort of look that makes you fit the stigma?
And then I know I've been talking about the consequences of each stigma as I've been bringing them up individually, but something that I want to categorize as a result of all the stigmas altogether for the Latina community is a concept called internalized stigma. And this concept is just really harmful because I know there's like a whole slur made for plus size Latina women by Latina people. I know that Latina people hate on immigrants. There are like a lot of them do. And even like I mentioned earlier, there might be a color preference, which I have seen in the real world where there will be people that are brown skin that will say that they don't want to get darker. And why don't they want to get darker. And so I think one of the biggest questions for the Latina community and for society in general is how do we tackle stigma? And I think one of the most important things that we can do as a group of people is just to think critically about the naturalization of opinions and beliefs about groups of people and how when we think about things as valid, justifiable, and reasonable, there's no longer reasoning towards the reasoning. And when we reach that realm, it's really hard to fight off stigma when biases are being confirmed and when people just are as they are. We start to like not critically think and question why we believe those beliefs and we think them as as natural thought. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to tackle stigma because stigma is one of the main driving forces of poverty and inequality, which are one of the main influences in the lives of black and brown communities. When stigma has become so normalized, it becomes the justification for things like redlining and inequality gaps. So when you look and say that you want to fight poverty and inequality, you need to first address one of the largest factors, which is stigma.